Welcome to Guiding Bolt. I'm your cosplay host, Jessica. Today, I want to talk about working safely when constructing cosplay by using a respirator. Having proper room ventilation is a good place to start, but it's not quite enough. To work safely, you need to wear proper personal protective equipment, also known as PPE. PPE can include things like gloves, eye protection, and respirators, which is the piece of equipment I want to focus on in this video. Be sure to share today's video with your other cosplay friends so they can craft costumes safely too. So let's jump into respirators. I remember the first time I went about acquiring my first respirator. It was a little overwhelming and I wasn't sure which direction to go. I want to help you guys out by sharing the research I gathered. Please remember though, while today's video is intended to help you, keep in mind that it's not a replacement for conducting your own due diligence. Please always read the caution and warning labels on any materials you're working with to ensure you understand the risks and precautions. So after all my digging around, which respirator did I choose? Well, I use the 3M 6502QL. The QL stands for quick latch, which is one of the reasons I like this respirator model. So as you can see, you have a piece that rests on the crown of your head, and then you have straps that go around your neck. And that's the quick release part. So this respirator is really easy to take on and off, but because of this quick latch piece, it's really easy to, you know, take it down from your mouth when maybe you're, you're switching workspaces or want to talk to someone outside of the workspace that has fumes on it. So this is a really handy feature. And I have found that I can talk to other people wearing this. I'm not sure how well this will pick up on the microphone, but I am able to have conversations with people while wearing this respirator. I also find this respirator comfortable and easy to breathe in. Um, please note that the 6501 O2 and O3 QL respirators are all the same model, just in small, medium, and large sizes. But the respirator is only half of what you need. You will also need to purchase the filters to attach to the respirator. It's the filters that actually prevent you from breathing in the harmful particles, gases, and vapors. So choosing a filter is where it becomes important to read the warning labels to ensure you're using the correct filter to block out whatever is harmful with the product you're using. So if you're going to be sanding items like EVA foam, you'll want the particle filter. And there are two parts to a particle filter, the letter and a number. The letter refers to the filter's oil resistance. N means not resistant to oil, R means somewhat resistant to oil, and P means strongly resistant to oil. The number refers to the amount of airborne particles that are filtered. So a 95 means that at least 95% of particles are filtered, while a 100 means that at least 99.97% are filtered. And if you're doing things like melting or heating AVA foam to high temperatures, it does give off toxic fumes, particularly hydrogen bromide. This is an acid gas that you don't want to breathe in. So be sure to choose a filter that is appropriate for acid gases. The other big thing you want to ensure your filter is rated for is organic vapors, which can also be toxic. Things like contact cement, Plasti dip, solvents, and paints give off organic vapors. If you go with the 6501, 2, or 3 QL respirator, I would recommend the 6923 filters or the 6926 filter. Both of these filters incorporate the particle and gas vapor filters into single cartridge units. 
you'll need a pair for the respirator. So as you can see here, pair for the respirator unit, the outside pink part, that is the particle filter. And then the inside part here, this is what's filtering out those organic and acid vapors. Both filter types include a P100 particle filter. The 923 model also filters organic and acid gases, while the 926 filter is more encompassing and filters multi-gases, which does include acid gases, organic vapors, plus other stuff. So read up on your labels to see if you need the higher coverage of the 6926 filter model and also keep your eye on prices. I've actually seen the 6926 filter go on sale for cheaper than the 6923 ones. So quick video today, but I hope it's been helpful and will help you be safe while working on cosplay. If you're interested in learning more about any of the items in today's video, I do have links below to them on Amazon. And while we do earn a very small percentage of any items you guys purchase, that's not, of course, the point of today's video. I'm just really glad that you guys are considering safe crafting. So until next time, let me know what cosplay you're currently working on down below in the comments. Stay safe, and we'll see you back here next week.